In this video, I'm going to teach you how to combine six different reflective listening techniques to maximize your effectiveness in any difficult conversation or negotiation. Hi everybody, I'm Bruce Lambert from HowCommunicationWorks.com. This is a channel where I teach you communication skills so you can improve your relationships, succeed at work, and be more confident. In a series of previous videos, I've emphasized the importance of listening, reflective listening, empathic listening, active listening. It goes by a variety of different names, but it refers to really the same set of skills. These are specific actions you can take when you're in a conversation. This can be an everyday conversation or a difficult conversation. They'll work the same no matter what. But these specific behaviors constitute what people refer to as active listening or reflective listening or empathic listening. And I've taught about some of them before, like labeling people's feelings, or summarizing what people say, or paraphrasing what they say, or taking time to be silent, or saying, mm-hmm, uh-huh. All of these things are effective skills on their own, but they gain even more power if you can combine these skills. In a series of books I was reading, I noticed a pattern in their advice. These books included Chris Voss's book about negotiation, a book called Difficult Conversations, and another book called Crucial Conversations. At some point in each of these books, they all recommended combining reflective listening techniques into a kind of package of techniques. Sometimes they have acronyms for these packages, but they're really the same idea, and that is if you combine reflective listening techniques together, they actually are more effective and give you more power in listening than if you use any of them on their own. Today I'm gonna to teach you about one particular combination that Chris Voss, in his book, Never Split the Difference, calls tactical empathy. Now there's nothing really special about the term tactical empathy, and there's nothing particularly special about this combination of skills. It's just the idea that you wanna use all of these skills together in your repertoire when you're listening to someone to maximize your effectiveness as a conversational counterpart or as a negotiator or as a friend or as a colleague at work or as a boss. So here they are. There are six of these techniques and you should use them together as much as you can. Technique number one, effective pauses. When you're listening to people, you have to pause. You might ask an open-ended question, and then you have to pause. Open-ended questions are an incredibly effective technique in conversation. They get people to talk about themselves. They get people to talk in an open-ended way about whatever the topic is. They're really effective, but people often undermine the effectiveness of open-ended questions by asking an open-ended question and then continuing to talk. If you ask open-ended questions, you have to then be silent. Now, silence is a little bit awkward in conversation. There's a pressure on both parties in a conversation or all parties in a conversation to fill silences. But you have to use your calm, reserve, and courage not to fill those silences. So ask a question or at any point in a conversation when you've said something important, let it sink in. Let them have time to think and respond. Be silent, that's technique number one. Technique number two, what Chris Voss calls minimal encouragers. In social science, we call these things back channel cues. It's the little things that we say in a conversation to reassure the other person that we're paying attention and listening. These are things like, mm-hmm, uh-huh, ah, yes, mm-hmm, okay. These are minimal encouragers. They fill a little bit of silence, they let the other person know we're paying attention, and they're basically used to encourage the person to continue. I have a habit of doing this a lot. In fact, I was giving a presentation, a training presentation, a couple of weeks ago, and I tend to say, when I'm listening to people in the audience talk, I tend to say, yeah, yeah. These are my minimal encouragers, but I actually, I actually must have been using them a bit too much because I got a comment in the evaluations that said, you know, Bruce, stop saying yeah, yeah so much. It's annoying. So maybe you should moderate the amount of these minimal encouragers you use. Don't use them all the time. Technique number three, mirroring. Mirroring is just taking the last few words a person said to you and repeating them back. Now, you think this might be annoying, but if you do it in the flow of a conversation, people won't notice and it will work well. So imagine someone is telling you about a difficult interaction they have to have at work. They have to tell a subordinate that they're gonna fire them or they have to criticize one of their subordinates. And they say to you, oh man, I have to have this meeting with, with Bill and I, I, I have to criticize his work. His re work really hasn't been very good and I have to let him know and I'm just dreading it. 
and you say to mirror, dreading it, wow, or just dreading it, wow, that sounds awful. So you just repeat the last couple of words they said, and then you just go on with the conversation. That's mirroring, and again, it lets people know you're listening, it lets people know you're paying attention, and it's a way of verbalizing empathy. Technique number four is labeling. I've talked about this one a lot, so I don't need to say too much about it here. Labeling is simply naming people's feelings. You use all of your resources, all of your perceptions, all of your knowledge to observe someone's behavior and try to figure out what they're feeling. Are they feeling joy or awe or happiness or regret or shame or guilt or fear? You try to Use your perceptual skills along with your detective skills. Use all the clues in the situation to figure out what they're feeling. And then you just say to them, you're feeling really ashamed about that. You're feeling really you know, um, frightened about that. Or say, man, you seem like you're just so happy about that. You seem so excited. It's just labeling their feelings. Like all of these techniques, it lets your counterpart know you are paying attention, you are listening, you are tuned in, so much so that you can name their feelings. Now, you might get it wrong, they might correct you, doesn't matter. In the flow of the conversation, this still signals to the person that you're trying to tune in. Even if you get it slightly wrong, it will give them an opportunity to correct you and tell you how they're actually feeling. Technique number five, paraphrase. Paraphrase is related to mirroring. It's repeating back what the other person said, but not in their words. You repeat it back in your words. So remember that colleague says to you, oh man, I have Bill's coming to my office for a meeting and his work has not been uh, up to the standard and I've got to let him know I might even have to fire him and I'm just dreading it. And so you paraphrase, you say, oh man, you have to meet with Bill and tell him about the quality of his work. You are not looking forward to that, are you? That's a paraphrase. You just summarize what they said in their own, in your own words rather than in their own words. When you summarize what they said using their words, that's mirroring. When you summarize it in your own words, that's paraphrase. Technique number six is summarizing. Here you sort of combine paraphrasing and labeling and in your own words, you summarize the whole gist, the whole main point of what your counterpart has been telling you in a given interaction. And the point of this is, of course, to let them know you've been listening, to let them know you understand, but you wanna see if you can get them to say, that's right. This is a goal that Chris Voss talks a lot about in his book. He says, see if you can get them to say, that's right. That you paraphrase them and summarize them and label them so accurately that the only possible response to your summary is, that's right. So if we go back to the situation at the office, you know, a colleague is telling you, yeah, Bill is coming in for his annual review and um, he hasn't been performing up to snuff and I've got to tell him, I, I might even have to threaten him with firing him, I might even have to fire him, I'm just dreading it. So then it's your turn to summarize and you say, so you have to meet Bill today and you have to tell him about the quality of his work and you are not looking forward to this, are you? you've never fired anybody before, man, this looks like it's gonna be a difficult day for you. And they say, that's right, and you've done it. So that's it. One powerful way to be an effective listener and stay connected to your counterpart, get them to tell you things and, and to build a, a trusting, intimate relationship with them is to combine these different reflective listening techniques. So just to summarize, we had six different reflective listening techniques. Number one, pauses. Number two, minimal encouragers. Number three, mirroring. Number four, labeling. Number five, paraphrase. And number six, summary. So go out there, use all these techniques together and see what wonders it will work in your interactions. People will talk to you and tell you things that you can't possibly believe. And when they're done talking to you, they will really feel seen and heard and listened to and they will appreciate having you as a friend or colleague or any sort of interaction partner. Question of the day, what reflective listening techniques do you like to combine and how do you combine them? Go down in the comments and let me know how you use combinations of reflective listening skills to maximize your effectiveness as a listener. If you like this kind of video about communication skills, we'd certainly be grateful if you could go down below, click the heart icon and give us a like. And if you enjoy this sort of video in general and you wanna learn more, We'd be grateful if you'd consider subscribing to the channel. And if you do, click that bell notification down below so YouTube will let you know every time we upload a new video. 
If you'd like to learn even more, you can go over to howcommunicationworks.com, give us your email, and we'll send you an ebook about empathy, and we'll occasionally email you, but I promise not too frequently, about new YouTube videos we've posted or about new articles on the blog or other sorts of offers or news about communication skills. Thanks so much for watching. I know you're busy and we appreciate the time you spend with us. See you next time.